Hey guys, and welcome to Walkthrough Wednesday. I'm Tim. Hey guys, I'm Matt, and I hadn't hit the, the coffee quite as hard as Tim, but I'm still having an awesome day here in Boring, Oregon. Today, we're at Don Schmidt Nursery, and we're gonna walk you around some of the display gardens. Spoiler alert, at the end of this video, guys, there's some 80-year-old Shishigashira, so you're gonna wanna stick around for that. Guys, Eric Schmidt's been uh, amazing to us, allowing us to film a lot of videos here, and this is one of the things we really had to film was part of their display garden here at Don Schmidt Nursery. I mean, they've got some amazing plants. Right behind me, there's a gorgeous Acer Grisham paper bark maple. Guys, smash that like button. I know you're gonna love this. Share this video with your gardening friends. And as always, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We got daily content. And subscribe to our podcast as well. We got weekly content coming out focused on Japanese maples each and every week. All right, guys, let's check out this garden. You're not gonna wanna miss this one. There's some amazing specimens in here, rarely seen at this size and we picked a beautiful day to be here. It's still an early spring color on a lot of these amazing specimens. Uh, now here's a really fun one. I, I'm a huge fan of this one. It's underutilized, I think, in the nursery trade and in the gardens. This is Acer palmatum alba joe. Guys, Acer palmatum alba joe, it's in that Makawa-like family. It's probably one of the least common selections that you see in the nursery trade in that Makawa family style. It has those larger leaves, that tighter, denser kind of habit a really unique tree that then go, often goes to some yellows and oranges in the fall with that Makawa style foliage. Uh, it's not uncommon for this one to get really yellow with bright neon orange. I, I love the display. Now behind us here, a pretty good size in can. Uh, really cool Leonard Lobum style Japanese maple with that strap leaf style foliage. Uh, check out our video on what is a Leonard Lobum Japanese maple. You can learn more about the style foliage. Guys, there's so many amazing plants in this garden. I mean, just coming through here, check out this Acer Palmatum Matthew. And planted next to this red dwarf Japanese maple, the contrast is amazing. Matthew has this lighter green color. Selection by Red Maple Nurseries. Uh, actually, it may have been even found by Billy Schwartz. But this is a tight, dense broom with that lighter yellow-green color. An amazing dwarf Japanese maple. You don't, you don't see that often. Pairing really nicely with this Adrian's Compact. I mean, really good colors on this. Uh, and the two together really make a nice contrast. Guys, let's keep checking out through here. Man, some amazing lace leaves. This is a Chitto Siyama loaded in seed behind me here. Really cool looking. Followed Got by a Spring Delight. Wow. Gorgeous specimen. Guys, check out this Maiku Jaku here. Man, Maiku Jaku, the dancing peacock. It's one of my favorite Japanese maples, sometimes known as fern leaf or aconitifolium. The leaf looks like a peacock. Fall color is amazing. For a green upright, it's hard to beat the fall color on Meiku Jaku. All right, guys, check out this variegation on this Acer Palmatum Benny Kamachi. Guys, this has that almost Kamigata style foliage, but it's variegated with like that pink red color in the early spring. Sometimes this tree can just give you an electric pink red color in the spring when it's first leafing out. One of the most amazing spring colors on any Japanese maple. I love this one. It kind of looks like a flowering shrub, the way when it first hits that spring color. It definitely gives you flower vibes. It's one of those high interest spring trees. I love the irregular, elongated foliage it gets. Pretty cool one to be growing here, especially seen at this size. Hey guys, I'm seeing a special one over here. This is a plant Matt and I really love. This is Acer Palmatum Jiro Shidari. This was named after Jiro Kobayashi, who Matt and I got to meet on one of our last trips to Japan. Jiro Kobayashi was an amazing, is an amazing nurseryman from Kobayashi Momiji Inn. And when he was little, this tree was named after him. It has this nice weeping habit, goes through some really nice shades of yellows to oranges to reds in the fall. I mean, for a graceful weeping style that gives some nice hooking branchings to it, this is a really unique Japanese maple. Guys, check out this fat Matthew over here. Oh, not me, sorry. Guys, this one right here, the another Matthew. Look at the size on this thing. That is a beefy looking tree. Rarely see Matthew at this size. This is a gorgeous specimen. I do like it because it's a broom that does get out there a little bit though. It, it is one that fills out quite quickly for us and it makes more of that like width to it as well. So it's typically about equally as wide as it is tall. Gorgeous specimen of Matthew. The light color on Matthew can be contrasted so well by the darker green of Kunara Pygmy. Selection by uh, our friends at Yamina Rare Plant Nursery. Found at Kunara Springs Restaurant as a witch's broom there in their gardens. An amazing compact selection from Australia. That one's from Down Under. Guys, we've got Acer Palmatum Dissectum Emerald Lace. Emerald Lace found by David Sabo, introduced by Del Lauks of Oregon. This is probably one of the most heat tolerant of the weeping lace leaves. 
I mean, Emerald Lace, super heat tolerant. It has extremely fine foliage. It's gonna have that nice spreading shape to it with some really good red fall color. Now, one thing I love about this tree is it really gets out there. It does fill out quite quickly. You're gonna give this one some room. It's not uncommon for it to be a foot to a foot and a half, sometimes even two feet of growth. A lot of that's gonna be in width. You're gonna have to stake it up if you want more height. But as you can see, it is a green lace leaf that brings excellent color and contrast in the garden. If you already have some reds, think about emerald lace as a way to add, you know, a larger specimen, but some great color. And it's crazy because this was found in Charlotte, North Carolina, sent to a nurseryman in Oregon who made it pop, started to make it popular, and then it's traveled all around the world. So this is a lace leaf that is amazing. It's a world traveler, but is really cool just because it came from North Carolina like we did. Yeah, now this tree will not only have some amazing emerald green colors on it, this is going to go to a really nice bold red in the fall. So if you like green lace leaves and you also want some red, you're going to kind of get the best of both worlds with this one. Guys, let's go check some of these out over here. Guys, we've got Acer Palmatum Ever Red. Man, this is an amazing specimen. You got to look up in here. I love when some trees get that older moss look on the older growth. You can see a little bit of lichen going on. Typically, that means you have really good air quality. Doesn't hurt the plant, but it's something you'll see on older specimens. This one has those incredible old tree vibes to it, guys. I mean, easily an over 30-year-old specimen. Even here in Oregon, this is a big tree. Guys, ever red, a really nice weeping red lace leaf. This one's a classic. I mean, it's one that we try to carry a lot at Mr. Maple. Definitely a really good, cool red lace leaf. All right, let's keep going. I got some more stuff to see. All right, guys, next up is one of my favorite trees in this garden. Look at this Sharps Pygmy, guys. This is an over 40-year-old specimen. I mean, this thing is incredible. Guys, Sharps Pygmy introduced by Jim Sharps in the 1970s. This is one of the very first, it came off the second set of graphs from Jim Sharp himself. I mean, this is an amazing tree. And to see this piece of history here, I mean, that is simply spectacular. I mean, guys, this right here is a big Sharps Pygmy. This is a ginormous Sharps Pygmy. This thing is incredible, whether you like bonsai or just really tight layered plants. This one is, it's got everything you're looking for. I love that old tree aesthetic. Another one with some lichen growing on it. You gotta get up in here and look at some of this moss. You bonsai guys are gonna freak out over this one. Don't bonsai this tree. We don't want you cutting it up, but this thing looks incredible. It's already a full size bonsai. Guys, just think about it. The one gallons you get from us in 50 years, 55 <laughs> years, can look about as cool as this one. That's what I always tell people when they, when I, they show Naka Komodo weeping, I'm like 400 years, it can look just like this. <laughs> but this is like an unprecedented specimen. Sharps Pygmy, rarely ever seen at this size. Incredible looking tree. You gotta get up in here, this is insane. <laughs> so guys, coming up here, we've got Acer Palmatum Shinda Sojo. You may be wondering why this tree's getting some of that white pink color. It does that with Shinda Sojo from time to time with unusual weather patterns when it's leafing out. If you get some really cold spells where as this tree is leafing out, you can really get some of this white pinks instead of those bright reds. Another really popular tree for bonsai, you know, rarely seen at this size. I, I love seeing specimens like this. Whenever possible, we want to get specimen maples on camera for you. I mean, that thing is incredible. All right, guys, we've reached the pinnacle here. I mean, I don't know how you go up from this. This is incredible. We're standing next to two 80-year-old shishigashiras. Guys, the story goes that three of the original shishigashiras in the country, in the United States, from Japan, came right here. And these are two of those shishigashiras right behind us. That means these trees are really, really, really old. Shishigashira, it's a classic Japanese maple. When it made its way to the United States, the first ones came right here, and we're looking at it. Guys, this thing is incredible. These are some massive specimens. I'm a huge fan of Shishigashira, as you know. These things are incredible. There used to be three of them. A driver did hit one of them, but there are just unprecedented size and age. Most of the Shishigashira in the nursery trade today came from these two trees right here in this garden. Guys, it's insane. I've seen Shishigashiras that may be older, but I've never, or that may be bigger, but I've never seen any that are older. I mean, that's one of the things about these trees. These trees are really old and these are pieces of history. If you've got a shishigashira in your garden, likely they came from generations of cuttings from these trees here. That's pretty spectacular. You gotta get up in here and check these out. Again, some of that older growth going on, guys. You can see that gray bark indicative of very older specimens. These have a little bit of lichen going on on them. Makes me get those Japan vibes. It looks incredible. The size and age of these are just amazing. We had to get them on camera for you today. 
Acer Palmatum Shisha Kashira here in Don Schmidt's Display Garden. An amazing place. You know, special thanks to Eric Schmidt for letting us shoot here today. If you haven't already, check out some of our other cultivar highlights we filmed here at their nursery. Guys, the lion's head Japanese maple. What a good way to end the day. I mean, seeing this piece of history is just spectacular. Guys, smash that like button. Make sure you subscribe to our channel so you can see these other videos we've shot here at Don Schmidt Nursery. And as always, guys, we'd really appreciate if you shopped with us on MrMaple.com. Take care. God bless. And have a great day.